Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by anatomical, behavioural and physiological adaptations. You should then be able to give examples of these adaptations. And if you're following the OCR spec, you should be able to describe how adaptations provide evidence for convergent evolution. In a previous video, we saw that Charles Darwin proposed a theory of evolution by natural selection. Due to natural selection, organisms become adapted to their environment. For example, the finches which Darwin observed in the Galapagos Islands have adaptations in their beak shape. These adaptations allow the finches to exploit the food resources in their environment. For example, the large ground finch has a short, large beak adapted for cracking hard seeds, whereas the green warbler finch has a thin, pointed beak to search for insects and mosses and leaves. Now we can divide all adaptations into three categories. Anatomical adaptations are adaptations to the physical features of an organism. A good example of anatomical adaptations are eye spots, which are found in a range of animals. Eye spots may have evolved to mimic the appearance of eyes, thereby confusing predators. The streamlined body shape of dolphins is another example of an anatomical adaptation. This body shape, along with flippers and fins, allows dolphins to move rapidly through water. Plants also have anatomical adaptations. For example, marum grass is adapted to live in xerophytic conditions in which water is scarce. The leaves of marum grass are rolled up with the stomata on the inside. Moist air is trapped within the tube rather than being blown away by the wind. The stomata in marum grass are found in sunken pits with fine hairs projecting inwards towards the centre. These anatomical adaptations ensure that moist air is trapped around the stomata, and this reduces the rate of diffusion of water vapour out of the stomata. Now, behavioural adaptations are adaptations in how an organism acts or behaves. Some behavioural adaptations are innate, in other words they're passed on through genes. Web building in spiders is an example of an innate behavioural adaptation. Other behavioural adaptations may be learned. For example, some species of primates learn to use sticks to probe for insects. And many behavioural adaptations are a combination of innate and learned. OK, the third category of adaptations are called physiological adaptations. Physiological adaptations are adaptations to the way an organism's biological processes function. A good example are antifreeze proteins. Antifreeze proteins are produced by certain fish that live in cold water. For example, the seas around the Arctic. Without antifreeze proteins, ice crystals can develop in the fish's tissues, and this can be fatal. Antifreeze proteins prevent the growth of ice crystals and protect the fish from damage. We can also find antifreeze proteins in certain plants and insects. Now, fish, plants, and insects do not share any recent common ancestor. So this means that antifreeze proteins must have evolved independently in these groups of organisms. When unrelated organisms evolve common features like this, scientists call this convergent evolution. Remember that evolution by natural selection means that organisms adapt to the conditions in their environment. So fish, plants and insects living in very cold conditions have adapted by independently evolving antifreeze proteins. There are lots of other examples of convergent evolution. Around 100 million years ago, mammals split into two groups, placental mammals and marsupials. These two groups are very different in how their offspring develop. In placental mammals, a fetus develops in the uterus and receives nutrients and oxygen from the mother via the placenta. So when the offspring are born, they've reached a relatively mature state. In marsupials, a fetus leaves the uterus at a very early stage and continues its development in a pouch, where it receives milk from the mother. Most marsupial species are found in Australasia, with some found in South America. So, placental mammals and marsupials split around 100 million years ago and are often found in different parts of the world. However, there are many cases of convergent evolution between placental mammals and marsupials. For example, marsupial moles and placental moles have both evolved to live underground. Both have spade-like forelimbs, which have evolved for digging. And both have a narrow, streamlined body, 
and velvety fur, making it easier to move through soil underground. So these two species show clear convergent evolution. Okay, so hopefully now you can describe the adaptations of living organisms. 